Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about using communication and navigation radios. For those of you following along at home, I'm using the book Flying with the Avidine IFD by Michael Bauer. It's a nice lesson book that uh, he's put together. He's a uh, certified flight instructor. And took the time to put together a nice book for us. And I'm going to use some of the scenarios that he's referencing there. It makes it easy to follow along. In this particular scenario, uh, we're sitting on the ground at Melbourne Airport down here in Florida, and uh, we want to fly home in our newly equipped IFD airplane, and uh, we want to fly heading back to Chicago from Melbourne, but we're going to fly north to Ormond Beach VOR, and then from there we're going to fly to the St. Augustine VOR. And this will show you how to kind of tune the, the nav frequencies. For departing, the tower frequency at Melbourne is 118.2, and ground control is 121.9, so let's see how to put those in as well. Let's start with the comm frequencies. The nice thing about the IFD, it was designed specifically, so if you're coming from a legacy navigator like a GNS 530 or something, there are several functions that we've kept identical to the 530. So if you were to jump in the airplane unfamiliar with the IFD, you could still navigate, communicate, and fly direct to with the GPS. So all those behave exactly the way they do. So the, no the knobs are in the same place and they pretty much operate the exact same way. So. With that in mind, let's load in our comm frequencies. We want the ground frequencies 121.9. The way you do that on a 530 is just the way you do it here. You can dial in 121.9. Put that into the active window. Tower frequency is 118.2. So we come over here and dial in 118. Two. Pretty straightforward, right? Just the way you're used to. Now, if we want to tune the nav frequencies, we're going to Ormond Beach VOR, with OMN, which is 112.6. So we can come over here and just move our cursor down and notice a keyboard comes up. I can either type in 112.6, like you see here, and transfer it in. And St. Augustine VOR is 109.4. I'll just touch it and I'll put it, it in using the keyboard so you can see the difference, 109.4. You don't need to put the trailing zero. It's smart enough to know. Interestingly, this, I'm going to go off frequency here on the comm for a minute. 123, enter. Notice I just put 123. If you enter a frequency, you don't even need to enter the leading one because it's smart enough to know the VHF range is in the 100 megahertz range. So if you wanted to put in 118.2, you could actually highlight that and put in 182 enter and it does all the rest for you. So it's kind of handy. So that's one way or two ways actually to enter VHF frequencies into the comm and the nav. You've got the knobs like you're used to on the legacy system and you've got the number keypad. The third way is using the frequency button where I could have just pulled that up and go over here. No, oh, look, there's my Melbourne ground, double click. Now I've got ground and then, oh look, here's Melbourne Tower 118.2, they're in. So now I don't have to even manually turn the knob. So there's more than one way to skim the cat here. If we're gonna fly the nav frequency, in this case, we're flying to Ormond Beach, we're currently in the GPS mode. Let's rotate this knob and that'll put us in the VLOC mode. Since we're in the simulator mode, we're not receiving a live signal, it's gonna be yellow. But if we were receiving a nav frequency, that would turn green. And then the IFD would self-identify. Once we start receiving 112.6, It'll listen to the Morse code and it'll give you the identifier and what radial we're on. And it, using the GPS, it'll give you the distance. Obviously, you don't have a DME hooked up, but it would do that. Again, I'm not receiving a live signal, but that information would show up right there. So it's pretty clever. You want to control the volume of the comm radio. Just spin this knob right here. You can see your volume is set there. Of course, you'll hear it nice and fine. And you push to break squelch. So as you can see, there's multiple ways to tune the radios using the knobs and buttons, using the keyboard, using the frequency nomination button. Getting into nav mode, super easy. Uh, tuning the radios is very similar to what you're used to, so not a lot of surprises here. In the next video, we will look at basic GPS navigation. So hope you join us for that.